In this video, we're going to look at how to determine functional values um, for a composite function. So there are two possible ways to do. The first way is to find the composite function f and g of x, like we did for the first two problems, and find f, g, and f of x. And then we plug the value into the composite function f and g and g and f. Um, but if we're given specific value, we could actually, the other solution is just go ahead and plug in the values. Um, so I'm going to show you both ways here. You can pick the way you like. The first way is the way we did it before, um, like the first two problems. So we're going to find, uh, start from x, plug x into g, uh, keeping f there as our second step. So we're going to plug, um, so this is g of x function, which is 3 over x minus 2. It's a rational function. And now we're going to plug 3 over uh, x minus 2 into the f function. And in the f function, the variable is x. So we're going to replace this um, blue x here, the x highlighted in blue, with another complicated rational function. So in f function, the denom numerator is 4, the denominator is x, which will be replaced by 3 over x minus 2. And we can also simplify this a little bit. Uh, if you don't want to simplify it, you can leave this as your answer. Um, but I'm going to try to simplify this um, a little bit uh, because this is like 4 divided by 3 over x minus 2, which means um, keep, change, flip by using the multiplication, a division rule for fractions. And so that gives us bottom three and top will be distributed four multiplied straight across. So four X minus eight. So that will be the final composite function. And for the second one, we're gonna keep X and plug X into, uh, keep G, plug X into F function, which is four over X here. And, and then we're going to plug 4 of x into the g function. And this is the second one is g function. The top is 3. The bottom, um, the variable x will be replaced by our new expression, which is 4 over x. So this variable x is replaced, but we're keeping everything x. Uh, else and if you want you can simplify it uh, but because this is not what we're looking for we're trying to evaluate the values and so we i'm going to just leave it this time i'm just going to leave it and now i'm going to try to plug three into the f and g function the composite of f and g which is this one here so i'm going to take um so the f and the g of three will be plugging three into f and g function. So we consider f and g as one function, which is here. So we're gonna replace in f and g function. So let me highlight it in blue. This is the f and g function. We replace x with three. Okay, so that's gonna give us 12 minus eight, it's four thirds. So that would be the answer for the first question. For the second question, g and f function of negative 2. So we are going to plug, um, so the g, that's g and f, the composite of g and f, and that is the answer for that. So we are going to replace in the g composite function of g and f, we're replacing this variable x with negative 2 and simplify this. So 4 divided by negative 2, it's going to be negative 2 uh, minus 2, negative 4. Uh, so we're going to get negative 3 fourths because positive divided by negative is negative. Okay, so that's one way to do it. But the first solution actually is kind of complicated because um, the process of finding um, the composite function is sort of um, complicated here. Uh, it's not too bad, but... Uh, and then we still have to plug in value later. But the second solution might be a little easier because this question, in this question, it's not asking for f and g of x. So we, there's no need to find 
the composite function uh, f and g of x for x minus eight over three. So we don't really need to find that. So we actually can just plug three directly into g function. So let's find a g function, which is right here, replacing this variable x with uh, the new number variable, where it's not a variable anymore, it's a number, a specific number three. So we can plug three into the g function. And again, uh, we still have two steps, um, start from the right to the left. So f function, we're going to deal with that in our second step. So I'm just plugging three into g function right now. So in the g function g, the top is 3, the bottom x minus 2, and that variable x will be replaced by the variable 3. Uh, sorry, by the number 3. And we simplify this um, 3 over 1, which gives us a 3, because 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 divided by 1 is still 3. So now in the second step, we plug 3 into the f function, which is um, 4 over 3. As you can see, we got the same answer as that. I think the second solution actually is faster than the first solution. Now, um, we can similarly find g and f of negative 2. So we plug negative 2 into f function. So pay attention to uh, which one we plug in. So f function is this one here. So we replace our x with negative 2. And uh, simplify this, we can get negative 2 because 4, positive 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. And now we're going to plug negative 2 into g function. Uh, g function is right here. So we're going to replace that x, this variable x, with negative 2. So now we end up with the same answer, negative 3 over 4. Okay. All right. Um, now we can look at another example. Uh, this time we have a... Uh, uh, we have a, uh, actually we didn't need this, we have a, a radical function and a linear function. So um, this time I'm just going to do the second solution because it's faster. So we try to find f and g of negative 2. So I'm going to plug negative 2 into g function, keeping um, the first function f. So I replace x with negative 2 and we're going to get 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4. Negative 4 minus 4, that's negative 8. And now we're going to plug negative 8 into f function, which is the radical function. We replace the variable x with negative 8. And we realize negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. And when you get something like this, you can go ahead and mark undefined because uh, we cannot really plug a negative number. We cannot calculate the square root of negative 5. Um, because actually we're going to get imaginary number, but this chapter we only talk about real numbers. We don't, don't talk about imaginary. So we consider square root of negative four, 5 as undefined, no real solution. Okay, now let's uh, find the other one. So this time, because uh, f is associated with negative 2, it's closer to negative 2. We plug negative 2 into f function, um, which will give us, let's keep g function for now and replace um, f function, which is the radical function. We replace this variable x with negative 2. And notice we are going to, after we add a negative 2 and a 3, we're going to get square root of 1. Uh, let's just do this on, your, on the scratch paper. Square root of 1 can be simplified just to a number 1. And now we're going to plug y into g function by replacing variable x with 1. Okay, because what's in the parentheses is going to replace the variable x. So we're going to get 2 minus 4, which is negative 2 as the final answer. Okay, all right.